All right, welcome back to the Friday Show, presented by Woodbine Racetrack. I'm Scott Jagow, along with Ray Pollock. Glad you could join us. Coming up, we might take some issue with the world's best racehorse rankings. But first, Ray, following up on our discussion last week of stars missing from the Breeders' Cup prep races, we started getting more discussion about that online and between you and me about the Breeders' Cup itself. So I guess let's pose a thoughtful exercise here. Uh, not denigrating the Breeders' Cup at all. It's an awesome event. We we all love it and enjoy it. However, you know, is it all it could be when you think about the potential, when you think about TV ratings and the international participation and the handle? Are we, you know, is it as elevated as it could possibly be, is the question. I would say no. TV ratings are not what they were when the Breeders' Cup was first started. Uh, of course, not many sports can claim that they, their ratings are as high as they were 30 years ago. But, you know, from a, a wagering standpoint, revenue has not really grown as as much as I think they anticipated when it went from eight races in one day to a two-day event with 13 or 14 races. So uh, I would say no. I, I would say that there is more upside to the Breeders' Cup that hasn't been realized, um, perhaps because they're kind of stuck with this you know, where they are today, which is the two day event at the same place. And maybe they need to start thinking outside of the box a little bit. I, I think it is probably time to think outside the box a little bit. It's on a Friday and a Saturday, which is not ideal because people are working on Friday. Uh, they would love to have it on Saturday and Sunday, but you're not going to run up against the NFL on Sunday. They're a juggernaut. Uh, they're undefeated. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't go up against the NFL. You're already yeah. going up against college football on Saturday, and the World Series is going on at the same time. This is why the late great Tim Caps, I want to tip my cap to him for this idea, is he always talked about moving the Breeders' Cup back earlier in the year, right? Maybe around Labor Day, a little bit before Labor Day. Therefore, you would not be competing against pro football or college football or the World Series you kind of would have a nice sweet spot on television there where there's not a lot of other competition. And who says uh, the championships have to be at the very end of the season? Uh, you know, and we talk about other sports in golf, the, uh, the Masters and the U.S. Open, they're in the first half of the year. In our own sport, the Triple Crown is in the first half of the year. So I kind of like the idea of moving it back. Yeah, I guess when John Gaines envisioned the Breeders' Cup, um, he modeled it after sports that had a regular season, baseball and football, and then had their championships at the end of the year, or not necessarily the calendar year, but at the end of the regular season. There is no regular season in horse racing, and in fact, it's getting more and more sporadic because of the way horses are brought up to big races. You know, We talked about this last week with horses racing two, three, four times a year, and taking two months off between starts and all that. So, yeah, I don't think it has to be at the end of the year, uh, but there are unintended consequences of moving it. If you move it to Labor Day, what does that do to Saratoga? What does that do to Del Mar? Those are two of the best uh, race meetings of the year, and, you know, you're messing you're messing with those things. So yeah. there there is no perfect solution by moving the Breeders' Cup uh, on the calendar. It wasn't that long ago that the Breeders' Cup actually thought outside of the box and, and considered doing something as crazy as moving the entire event to Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong Jockey Club expressed interest in hosting the Breeders' Cup, and there were discussions about that. There were also discussions about maybe having it at two different tracks uh, the same year, have the turf races at Woodbine or in Europe or in Hong Kong or Japan, and have the the dirt race is at a U.S. track since no other country really has much in the way of dirt racing. So, you know, there are some things that I think the Breeders' Cup can consider going forward. And that that what you're talking about sort of feeds into the, the talk about it being the world championships. They still use that moniker. I'm not so sure it's that accurate when you think about there's got going to be an Abel who just won the arc. She's not coming to the Breeders' Cup world championships. Her trainer, you know, said she's had a tough year. I, it's a totally understandable decision. Uh, Winks, arguably the best racehorse in the world, is not coming. Frankel never came. See the Stars never came. 
right. a lot of the top class horses have not participated in the Breeders' Cup, so I think it's lacking in that aspect. If you moved it back, it might fit the schedule better in Europe and in Australia, so there's a benefit there. And I understand what you're saying about Del Mar, Saratoga, but maybe you somehow incorporate Del Mar and Saratoga into the Breeders' Cup rotation and 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 you know use that as a as a benefit. Um, but my point is, I think we can do better when it comes to when you're just looking at the data, the handle, the TV ratings, and the international participation. Yeah, the the handle has been relatively flat since they went to two days. It did not experience the growth they anticipated. They have had growth in ticket sales and that sort of thing, mostly in, in by you know increasing prices by having it two days instead of one. So from a revenue standpoint, with with that thrown in, yes, they are doing better. But handle hasn't taken off as much as I think it should have. So um, as I said earlier, it may be time to think outside the box a little bit. What do you think? Share your thoughts. On our poll, we have some options to consider in thinking about this. Maybe it'll generate some discussion, and maybe going forward, some of these ideas can actually be considered or reconsidered. All right, take the poll on our website, pollockreport.com. Well, Ray, the Longines World's Best Racehorse Rankings just came out, the latest edition. And at the top is Arrowgate, 134, Winx, 132. And if you go back to April when the ratings came out then after the Dubai World Cup, it was exactly the same. Arrowgate 134, Winx 132. Arrowgate has since lost twice, one of them a crushing defeat. Winx has since gone on to win several races. So, and I know that these rankings are based on one performance, but does this make any sense? Well, not to me, no, because, it, you know, it, you're looking at a body of work. And yes, that was the, the Dubai World Cup was sensational. But he's he's had two starts since then that were not sensational. The San Diego handicap was a complete disaster finishing off the board. And then he got beat on the on the square by his stablemate collected in the Pacific Classic. So I, I guess they're designed to reflect the best performance. But. You know, a golf a golf handicap. I do know a little bit about that. Is based on your your five you know ten best out of your last twenty scores or something. So it's not just you know it's not just your best score. It's it's based on your you know your ten best scores. And in, in horse racing, it seems to me it shouldn't be your single best effort. It should be uh, collectively you know maybe throw out one bad race. But um, I don't get it. I you know he he doesn't look like the horse that's the best horse in the world right now. No, and at the very least, they need to change the name of the rankings to best performance of the year or something like that. Because when you say best uh, racehorse, then you, you're misleading people. And in fact, all the time in the comments section, people are going back and forth, some who don't understand how the ratings are done. And then, you know, people are trying to explain it. It's a lot of confusion for no, for no reason just either fix the thing or change the name of it so we don't have to go through this all the time. But it's a, it's absurd, really, if you think about it. A pitcher throws a no-hitter in the first game of the season, then loses 10 straight games. His ERA is going to be disastrous. He's not going to be called the best pitcher in the league just because he threw one no-hitter. It just doesn't make any sense. And, uh, you know, not trying to take shots or anything, but... I, I believe this is an issue that's a problem when you're, you know, if you if you take any sort of stock, and I know a lot of people don't, in these things, I mean, I think Winks right now should be the top-rated racehorse of the world, period. End of story. Well, the, I think the, the, the rest of the world has traditionally looked at this type of ranking. Uh, you know, th this is what they're used to looking at, whereas in the United States, we look at the speed figures and it's more of a what have you done for me lately kind of mentality. And frankly, Arrogate hasn't done that much lately. His win came in March, and he's lost twice since then. We'll see what happens in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Of course, Gunrunner is number four on the list, right behind Enable. He would probably jump to number one if he beat Arrogate in that race. Although, let's be clear, the number one racehorse in the world right now is Winks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Friday Show presented by Woodbine Racetrack. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.